Throughout history, countless tales have unfolded around the capture of notorious criminals, with their tales of the rise and fall of hardened criminal masterminds. Among them is the story of Dick Turpin, the infamous highwayman, stands out as a fascinating count where an unexpected factor, his piss poor handwriting, played a pivotal role in his downfall. Look, it's easy for me to joke about this, but in all honesty, my handwriting's not great, but at least I know that my handwriting is not going to get me caught and locked up for life. In the 18th century, England was plagued by notorious highwaymen, and none were more audacious and feared as Dick Turpin, the infamous Dick who would rob people blind as they went. Probably a much more well-dressed fellow than some of the youths you see today wandering around the streets robbing people. Ah, <sighs> street crime was so much more fashionable back in the day. Turpin may have followed his father's trade as a butcher early in his life, but by the early 1730s he had joined a gang of deer thieves and later he became a poacher, burglar, horse thief and even killer. Renowned for his daring escapades, horse riding skills and ruthless robberies, Turpin became an infamous legend. His ability to constantly change his identity and location enabled him to evade capture for an extended period of time, further fueling his notoriety. Something quite controversial was introduced, however, called the Black Act, which was enacted in 1723. This legislation sought to combat the escalating crime rates by imposing severe penalties on offenders. In response, law enforcement authorities intensified their efforts to apprehend criminals, making their capture a top priority. However, Dick, being a cunning man, was always one step ahead of the law, and despite this being in place, he was one of the most successful highwaymen there was, mainly because he could do his job and not get caught. So, the question arises, how does this once notorious highwayman get caught? Well, it's a pretty funny story. Well, one useful factor in this new law was that it was quite extensive and it gave police powers way beyond what was required. Effectively, if you looked even somewhat disguised by way of an accessory that covered your face, for whatever reason, the police would basically be able to arrest you without a warrant without due cause and be able to detain you without trial. Yes, that's just to give you a taste of how serious these crimes were back in the day and the extended measures they had to take to try and stamp it out. I mean, imagine that happening today. Twitter would never hear the end of it. Unbeknownst to Turpin, his attempts to communicate with his brother-in-law would eventually prove to be his undoing as in 1737 he penned a letter unaware of the unintended consequences that awaited him. Due to his hurried and illegible handwriting, the contents of the letter became distorted and were difficult to decipher. Kinda like when people write in fancy writing, but effectively fancy writing is just illegible mess that you can't read and everybody says it's fancy but it's just because it's poorly written. You know the kind of handwriting I'm talking about. Yes, it might be fancy, but you can't read the bloody thing, so what the hell's the point? For someone so notorious, this next thing is pretty hilarious. Turpin wrote to his brother-in-law, who saw that it was marked with a Nork post stamp. Given that he was based in Hempstead and knew of no one at that place, he refused to pay for the delivery charge of the letter. Either he was just a tight ass and didn't want to pay the fee, or that he actually did know it was his brother and simply just didn't want to associate with someone who was now so notorious. The letter was then moved to the office of Saffron Walden, where James Smith, who had taught his younger schoolmate Dick Turpin how to write whilst they were at school, recognised the handwriting. He contacted Turpin's brother-in-law and urged him to open the letter. So he did. The brother-in-law, unable to make sense of Turpin's convoluted script, sought assistance from his schoolmaster to unravel the message. However, the intricate combination of ink and paper only added to the challenge. Therefore, the former teacher stepped in to decipher what this whole thing was about. Funnily enough, the school teacher actually recognised the alias that Dick Turpin had put in the letter as something he recognised from back in the day. A fleeting moment of recognition sounded the alarms. Realising their initial mistake and what they now knew, they immediately contacted the authorities and an investigation was undertaken to track down the notorious Dick Turpin. With the newly acquired information, law enforcement agents swiftly tracked him down to a hidden lair in Essex 
and on the 4th of May 1739, after years of eluding capture, the notorious highwayman was finally apprehended and placed under arrest. Subsequently, Turpin faced a trial, where he was convicted of his crimes and ultimately sentenced to death. His execution on the 7th of April 1739 marks the end of an era, bringing about his infamous career to a close. This entire story is captivating, as if it wasn't for this whole thing, who knows when he would be captured, or if he would ever be captured. Whilst Turpin's audacious criminal activities and the enactment of the Black Act played a significant role in his ultimate downfall, it was mainly the unintended consequences of the communication he had with his brother-in-law that unravelled his fate once and for all. So, what can we learn from all this? Well, it basically shows that if you are a notorious criminal, you have to work hard to cover your tracks. Or just take a bit more time to write your letters and make it so you're not so goddamn distinguishable. I mean, this was easily avoidable, but one silly mistake can cost you your life. If you guys liked that video, here's another one just like it. I'll see you guys in the next video. Fantastic.